Hi, welcome to the White Noise Studio. I'm Marlon. EQing in a mix and how to do it. In this video, I will show you my approach. Um, please subscribe to this channel and like this video and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when we upload a new video. How to EQ is a pretty broad subject and since I don't believe there's one definitive way how to do it, I will show you with a few examples how I approach EQing in a mix. Here's the recording project of the song White Noise by The Hoopschrauber, uh, the best song name ever. This is part of the White Noise session I did a while back and I will do a full breakdown of this mix in an upcoming video. You can find the finished video here and I will put a link in the description below. So this is the raw unmixed version from directly after the recording session. Uh, I did some small tweaks here and there but nothing major. Let's check out the unmixed raw recording. Before doing any compression or effects, I will make sure the source material is optimized. And with that I mean I will make sure it sounds good. To achieve that I will do EQ cuts, EQ dipping, uh, automate EQ and then do some EQ boosting. So with EQ I'll cut first and then boost. Let's focus on the lead vocal. Um, for the sake of this video I will do it in solo, but always make sure any corrections you do make sense in a mix. Since this is a live recording you can hear the bleed of the other instruments in the microphone. Uh, you can also hear the low end of bass guitar and bass drum coming through in the microphone and to remove that I will use a high pass or a low cut. Um, I will sweep the low cut to find the sweet spot between leaving the lead vocal intact and removing that low end. Uh, it's somewhere around here. Uh, as you notice at the end, there is some proximity effect in the lead vocal. Uh, let's automate that. A piece of your I noticed during recording there was a resonance happening around 2800 hertz, uh, probably of the drums and the guitars uh, peaking together at that specific frequency. Uh, I will first boost it so you can hear it and then I will dip it. Piece of your Piece of your Piece of your So now I have uh, addressed all resonances and some uh, proximity effect. Uh, you can really go crazy with uh, removing uh, resonating sounds and, and dips and stuff like that. But always be careful because you can easily destroy a sound. So always check in a mix and if it's too much bring it back up a little bit. Um, the next step I always do is I add EQ to shape it a little bit more. 
So that can be uh, depending if you want color or uh, um, transparent EQ, it can be a plugin or outboard or whatever. Um, for the sake of this video, let's do uh, with the same EQ. So now I did some boosting in the upper lows and I added some high ends to bring out the brightness in the vocal. From here I will do compression and more tweaks and etc etc but that's for a different time. Uh, let's check snare drum again in solo for the sake of this video. Let's do the same for the snare drum. Uh, first I high pass uh, to remove some low end. Uh, there's not much uh, sub low going on here, but keep in mind it will really add up with all these tracks and you really want one or two sources of sub low in your track to keep it tight, punchy and clear. Let's continue. Um, there's uh, a honk around 500 hertz. Uh, I will dip that now. I will leave the high end as is because I want the high end for the hi hat and the top of the snare drum. Uh, I did not record a separate hi hat track, so the snare drum uh, doubles in that function for snare drum and hi hat. Um, now I want some mid range added. Uh, it brings out some clarity in the snare drum. So let's hear it in the mix now. Okay, now the fun part. Um, if you do tweaks like this, you always have to check your face because if you tweak the low end and do some dips, sometimes it can happen the face is flipped. Um, so that is what I'm gonna do now. And let's check it again. See, I just switch it on and off and see what happens. Uh, now it fits the mix better. Uh, this is something you cannot check in solo because in solo, it sounds the same. So you always have to check it in, in context with the mix. Let's turn it on and off. Sometimes the plugin has its own face flip, so I will do that now on FabFilter 3 so we can do a before and after EQ comparison. Okay, let's check it out in the mix.
Now it sounds more even. Uh, often when you do an EQ uh, dips, uh, you will change the volume a little bit of the track. So actually it should be just a tiny bit louder uh, to have the same balance. But now it sounds more even, it sits better in the mix. Uh, and you noticed I looped just a small part because it's easier to hear the differences if you use a small part because sometimes the drummer plays a different part of the snare and the sound changes a bit so it's a bit more difficult to uh, check the before and after. Okay, let's go to overheads. They're over here. Let's play my solo. Uh, with good speakers or headphone, you will notice that the low end is offset. Coming from one of the speakers, it sounds a bit fancy. It's a bit more difficult to hear on a mobile phone, but with headphones and good speakers, you can check it. So I will high pass the overheads. Uh, let's do it on and off. Uh, you will notice now with the high pass on that the low end is tighter. It's actually a bit smaller in the, the, the stereo width and a bit more punchy. Uh, if you go for that wide low end, there are different ways to do it. This sounds a bit out of phase. So if you listen it on a mono device, it will probably have phase issues. So. Uh, you can even add a bit of low end uh, back into it if you want to. Uh, another way to do this is not to do, a, to do a stereo high pass, but to do a sides high pass like this. What that does is it only removes the low end from the sides of a signal and it will keep the mono uh, low end intact. That will add to the bass drum and snare drum if you want to. And from here you can even boost the low end in uh, the mid signal. With this, you make sure the low end will stay in phase and don't get all sorts of weird phase cancellations and uh, problems with mono devices and stuff like that. Let me explain a little more why I always start with cutting. This has to do with something called cloaking. Um, cloaking is when a frequency is so loud it overshadows other frequencies in a sound. This will prevent you from correctly judging if tweaks you do have any useful effect and you will keep on tweaking and tweaking and you will never be happy with the end result. It's the same with the face flip I just told. If you don't do that, the sound will never sit right and you will be in a world of pain in the mix. So when you first will do boosting, these cloaking frequencies will never disappear in a useful way. I have a good example of a cloaking frequency. This final example is a guitar part of an upcoming Iron Lizards release. Uh, I will put the link in the description below, of course. These guitars were recorded in Paris by the band themselves with an SM57 and they use the same cabinet on all guitar parts. So all guitar parts have the same resonance frequency. Let's check it out uh, without any EQ. Uh, these electric guitars have the same issue a lot of electric guitars have. Uh, I talked about this in the Sooth video. Uh, they have this typical resonance in the upper mids. Let's reduce these frequencies and you know exactly what I mean. Uh, 
Let's do uh, all and off. So it's pretty evident. Um, before I will boost anything, I will high pass these guitars and even low pass them a bit. And now we'll boost a bit of the lower mid uh, to add some beefiness. So if I left those resonances in, it would be much more difficult to judge that I needed to beef the low end. Okay, that is a big improvement. If you have any questions on how I approach EQing in a mix, please put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button so you know when a new video is online. That's it for this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!